So the third new rule of money is, I think the big mistake is, I hear so many people say it's important to save. That's ridiculous. And the reason that's ridiculous is because what happened in 1971 is crucial. In 1971, the U.S. dollar stopped being money. In 1971, the U.S. dollar became a currency. And what that meant is Richard Nixon, in 1971, the president, took us off the gold standard. That's like giving an alcoholic free rent to the bar. Or it's like giving somebody who can't control their spending unlimited credit cards. So what's happening is all the savers today are losers. You know, the problem with 1971 is that the federal government keeps printing money, so the value of your money keeps going down. So these people, I'm saving, 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 and if you notice, as the value of the dollar goes down, prices go up. So they call this inflation. You know, you look at in, in um, 1997, oil was about, I think, $10 a barrel. Ten years later, it's about 135 a barrel. So they say it's inflation, but really what it is is the dollar's value coming down. So savers are getting wiped out today. So to keep saying to yourself and to your kids to save money, that is not uh, the new rule. That's an old rule. So a very big problem for most people is stop using the word save and use the word Hedge. You've got to hedge your money. Hedge against losses. Like when I buy a stock, I put a hedge in. I put a stop loss or a uh, put inside of it or a call. Whatever I'm doing, I want to stop it. So today, I don't save money. I'm hedging. So I, in 1997, I started investing in oil, gold, and silver. So as a dollar drop, oil, gold, and silver went up. So I'm not betting so much on oil, gold, and silver, I'm betting against the U.S. dollar. And that's why this idea that you're going to tell people you need to save money, that's really, really an obsolete idea because the idea went obsolete in 1971. The U.S. dollar in the last few years has lost almost 80 percent of its purchasing power. And the prediction is, because this has happened throughout history, it happened thousands of years ago with the Romans, with the Greeks, with the Germans, with the English, the Japanese, and the Chinese. Every time they've made money, money into a currency, something you could print at unlimited, every time they have, that has happened, the currency has gone to its true value, which is zero. So I am afraid as this economic volatility continues, the savers who were operating by the old rules of money are just going to get wiped out because the purchasing power of their dollar is going to go down. So even if the bank's paying you 5 to 10 percent interest, you can't keep up with the bank's printing money. So that's the old rule of money is saving money, and the new rule is hedge. You've got to be able to see what's coming up as something else is coming down. The last thing I want to point out to you on this idea of saving money is this. One of the biggest misunderstandings in the world today is what they, they talk about if I misspell again, apologize, is the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank, which I believe was created in 1913. In 1971, the reason 1971 is such an important time was because the U.S. Federal Reserve became the bank to the world. They could print as much money as they wanted. Never in the history of the world has anybody been allowed to print money for the rest of the world. Uh, let me backtrack one more time. I talked about how the Romans did it, the Greeks did it, and all this. Every time people have done this, chaos has broken out, and that's why there's chaos in the world today. So in 1913, when the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank was created, they were basically allowed to print money for the world. Every time that has happened throughout history, a despot has arrived. For example, in 1933, a man named Adolf Hitler rose to power when the Weimar Republic was allowed to print as much money as it wanted to do. And in Russia, when Russia's currency broke down, a man named Lenin rose. When the Chinese economy broke down, Mao Zedong rose. 
when the Yugoslavian government broke down, Milosevic arose. So we're in that critical point right now, and one of the causes of it was in 1933, this thing called the U.S. Federal Reserve was created. And I think, you know, they've done a pretty good job of making the rich richer. Unfortunately, the poor, many of the poor are getting poor. One of the problems of this is you have to understand that, first of all, the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank is not U.S. It is made up of a bunch of international rich guys from all, all over the world. The second thing, it is not federal. It's not a U.S. entity. It is, kind of, again, a bunch of rich banks from all over the world. Third, it has no reserves. There is nothing there. And fourth, it's not a bank. So that's why when I talk to people about really needing to understand the new rules of money, which really began to take effect in 1971 when we were allowed to print money for the rest of the world, it's understanding that this system here is causing the rich to get richer and the poor and middle class to get poorer, but most importantly, the lower middle class is almost getting wiped out. High prices, volatilities in the market, food getting more expensive, gas getting more expensive, savings getting wiped out, home values going around. And the reason the troubles have started, again, is the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank is not U.S., it's not federal, there's no reserve, it's not a bank. So if you understand that, then you can start to hedge your position rather than save money. And that's the new rule of money.